All right, how about another one of our most popular variations in the alkyne? Let's get to the exchange variation. And we come from a weird move order here. You can definitely play bishop g4 for an edge, but I typically just let him transpose as that knight on f3 you don't normally want to have. You, in fact, probably need to play a move like h3 here to stop bishop g4 ideas. And my opponent had an interesting concept because we're starting to drift towards the ideal alakine position. You can go knight c6 first and then bishop g4. And it's this concept rook c1, d5, where our knight is going to come around, knight e7, knight f5, and notice how bishop and both knights are hitting here, and we can remove the guard. So that is your ideal alakine structure. And my opponent decided to play d5. And it doesn't change much developmentally, because I still want to play bishop g4. Now I have the threat if bishop takes f3, the c pawn will be hit. So knight bd2 is probably the best way to go. My opponent plays knight c3. And this is how quickly, from natural moves, white can go off the rails. So it takes. We'll take that. Hey, I had to give up the bishop pair, but if I can get it right back with a pawn in hand... I'll take it. Now the d pawn's weak, so let's pressure it some. And from a technical standpoint, I very well could take here, and then take, and then take, and this would be completely fine. For some reason I missed this in the game, but that's, that's definitely the cleanest way to go about doing this. I decided to get a bit fancy. Rook c8. And now, imbalances. I think when I played this game, which is roughly a year ago now, I was obsessed with studying imbalances and was trying to create them frequently in games unnecessarily. <laughs> so here, rook takes c3. Hitting queen and pawn. Which one do you want? And let's see how the pieces work together. <coughs> oh no! That's the second time in the series I, I, I had one sneak up on me. At least it wasn't a two for, or three of a kind, or I don't know. Do sneezes have names like poker hands? Tell me in the comments. Anyways. Queen c7, putting pressure on that c3 pawn. Got to defend it. And we gradually want to improve our position. When are rooks rooks? When they have open files to work with. We don't really have targets for white. The b7 pawn, you could just push it to b6. How are we going to win? We need to push the phalanx while keeping our king safe keeping his rooks inactive. So coordination. First, I go ahead and play b6. There's no c5. There's no target on the b-pawn. Well, since he put the rook there, giving me the opportunity to pressure the c-pawn, I'd be happy to trade down if I'm winning another pawn. Okay. Well, I want to play e6 to kick the queen out of there. But if I do, I drop the d-pawn. Well, my bishop served his purpose. So let's bring him on back to x-ray defend d6 so I can play e6. Go away. Get some flexibility with the queen. If a move like rook f4 is played, I can go rook c7. Just hold things together. Rook h4. We don't need the bishop on f8. Put the question to the rook. Now, white's kind of playing all or nothing over here, but there's really no way to get to my king. 
So we'll take the pawn. I'm not interested in being too greedy. So I'll just offer the trade. I got enough. My D pawn and E pawn are going to start marching. Big threat. Queen H6. No more. So he wants to play rook h4, but when he left the back rank, left himself open for this trade. How do we deal with this? If h5, g4, he's got some chances. h6. No counterplay. So he's getting his pieces into the game, but... Bishop c5, anchor. So now the a pawn can move. The bishop's in a better spot, more flexible, hitting more key squares. The pawns are about to roll. I'll take those. Threatening rook e2, followed by rook takes a2. And notice I'm not in a hurry to play rook e3. My rook is better than white's rooks. You don't have to trade. That isolates another pawn, so we'll attack the weakness. X-raying f7. So let's go ahead and defend that. Gain a bit of space. Take away key squares. Still defending f5 now, threatening to run the h-pawn. Use everybody in your camp. Well, if you want that one, I'm going to push other ones. Finally, he gets the trade, but it's too little too late, and I believe in time trouble my opponent decided to risk it for the biscuit, but there was nothing to be found. And it was definitely... Scramble mode, otherwise I would have taken the pawn. And very satisfying two-queen checkmate. That will do it for this Alakine Exchange variation. Thanks for stopping by, joining in. Hit that like and subscribe. Thanks.